Hi there, I am Lee and welcome to Iron Mind Blocks. So in today's video, I've got a review for you. So I'm going to be reviewing this device here, which is actually in the box, but I'll get it unboxed for you shortly. So it's the Arcos Safe T Mini. So Arcos is better known for creating smartphones, tablets and MP3 players, you've probably heard of them, but this is their first kind of a delve into the crypto uh, market and this is the device which I'll be sharing with you shortly. So in this uh, video, what I'll be sharing is a close up look at the hardware, how it compares to some of the other popular um, cryptocurrency wallets, They'll be doing some test transactions, we'll send and receive some Bitcoin from it. I'll show you the um, software side of things and how that interacts uh, when using the hardware wallet. And then at the end of the video, I'll do a quick summary and we'll see how this device compares to some of the better known uh, cryptocurrency uh, wallets. So that's all coming up in this video for you. Um, also, just one other di uh, disclaimer to make you aware of. Um, I've sent over this um, device for free from the company Arcos, um, but I've not been paid or compensated in any way for doing this review. So I can give you a honest and unbiased um, opinion. So let's jump into it. We'll take a closer look at the hardware first. The first look at this device. So you open it with a slide and then we lift up this little flap and inside we have our device. Here you can see everything that's included with the Safety Mini. So we've got the box, we've got free recovery seed cards. Um, however, I must point out that there are only paper, they're not actually card. User instructions, the safety mini itself, it's kind of this little mini bag holder for it, a keychain lapel, and a USB cable. So, just taking a close up look at the device before I power it on, some initial uh, first impressions. So, the device is, it is mini, it's very small and compact. You can see it's sort of a is well inside the palm of my hand. Taking a close look up, I'm not too sure how well you can see uh, because of the reflection on the device. Um, but we have a rectangular LCD screen uh, display in the center. Obviously it's um, a round design, which is quite different to a lot of the other devices. A lot of the other um, hardware wallets are more rectangular. So this is, it feels um, very lightweight. Uh, I don't know how many grams it is in total, but um, it's probably, I don't know, literally it's the weight of a few coins. Um, has two buttons on the front. I just see those there, uh, the small logo. Uh, there's not much going on on the back. Just a logo, shiny design. And if you look at the side of it, try and get that focus for you. It's kind of just a plastic molded um, finish. So that's the device itself. There's also a little uh, notch in the top there uh, just for adding it to your keychain. So that's the device itself. Um, let's get it plugged in and powered up and we'll see how the screen looks and then we'll move on to software and transactions. I hope you guys can see that LCD screen there. So I've just got a logo on the left hand side and it says welcome. Please visit safe-tio forward slash start. So let's check out the website and we'll get this device set up. Okay, so the hardware wallet is plugged in and we're just getting started with the uh, installation of the device. So we've already installed a software uh, bridge so the uh, browser can interact with uh, the hardware wallet. So the next part is to install uh, firmware for the device. So it's 1.1.2. Um, the device is shipped without any uh, firmware so you need, we need to do this as a first step. So just flash in the... Uh... Okay, so the firmware has been flashed. Uh, we now need to unplug it and then re-plug it back in. Right, so the firmware has been flashed and now we have um, two options on the browser. We can create a new wallet or we can uh, recover a wallet, create a new wallet. So we need to write down our recovery uh, words. So we've completed the uh, backup of the recovery seed phrase and now we just need to set a device name. So now using a combination of what's shown on the device and what's shown on the browser screen, we need to enter our PIN number. So in this instance, I'm just going to enter a simple PIN of 1234. So this is one of the things that I found to be uh, quite interesting with the Arcos wallet uh, compared to other wallets. Um, it's not provided with any native um, software provi is provided with the device. So you have to use a pre-existing or um, otherwise 
or other use of uh, crypto wallets. So you can use things like the Bitcoin wallet, you could use my ether wallet or my crypto and use those to interact with the hardware device. So the hardware is provided, but it's not provided with its own software. You have to use um, other versions of software, which is already freely available. So that's quite um, common. Um, you can use other softwares with other hardware wallets, but most of the others, for example, like the Trezor and the Ledger, they're provided with their own native software. So sometimes that can be a little bit easier to use as kind of an all-in-one package with your hardware wallet. Whereas the Arcos Safety Mini is not provided with any software. You're just kind of uh, pointed in the right direction so you can use various different software with it. So in this instance, um, I'm going to use uh, and do a Bitcoin transaction and I'll be using the Bitcoin um, Electron Wallet. So we'll see how we get on uh, using that with this device. Okay, we have gone through the Electron Wallet uh, installation and linked it to our hardware device. So just for reference, we had to pick a standard device and then linked it to the um, hardware wallet. So now we have the wallet and we are ready to receive uh, transactions. So I'm gonna use the receive option first of all, and then I'm gonna send a small amount of Bitcoin using this QR code. Uh, once that's been received, um, I'll just show you that on screen and then we'll send a Bitcoin transaction back out and I'll just show you how that process works uh, when using the hardware wallet. Okay, on the Electrum wallet, we have our incoming Bitcoin transaction. So it's this transaction here, try this part. So we can see the incoming transaction information. We're currently on uh, four confirmations. So we should be able to send it the transaction back out now. So I'll show you how that works. So if you go to send, I've already pre-populated the uh, address. So paying to this Bitcoin address here, which is the Bitcoin um, iMineBlocks uh, tips address. We've added our description and the amount. I've set it to the max amount. So it is the incoming transaction uh, minus the kind of outgoing fee. And now if we press send, so it confirms the amount to be sent and the processing fee. So we select yes asks us to enter our pin so on the device it asks us once again to uh, verify our pin so I'll just show you what that looks like on the device snap in a picture so we enter our pin using those numbers so it's one two three and four in that locations and we confirm and on the device again we have a confirmation, so there's two options. It confirms the amount and the address, and also you can press either button to either cancel or confirm it. So we're just gonna go and confirm it. And just for one extra confirmation, we confirm it again on the device. So it's confirmed on device, and now the payment has been uh, relayed. So that's it for receiving and sending a Bitcoin transaction using the Arcos Safety Mini. Okay guys, so we're coming to the end of our video now. So you've seen me um, get started, get set up with the Arcos Safety Mini. So just some closing thoughts um, on this device, what, what I thought of it. So this device is a perfectly um, sound and capable um, hardware wallet. Um, from doing some extra research, I found that the hardware that's in the, de is the device is um, basically exactly the same as the Trezor, um, the original Trezor wallet, sorry. Um, so if you like the, the functionality and the usage of the uh, Trezor device, uh, what you're getting in this device is essentially exactly the same. Uh, one point to make uh, with this versus the other um, hardware wallets is that this device doesn't have any native software included uh, with it. So what that means is that you have to kind of um, use um, alternative um, softwares that work perfectly with the device, but they're not kind of integrated with it as such or designed for it um, in such the same way. So in this video, you would have seen that I used the Bitcoin Electron Wallet. If you want to use it with um, Ethereum transactions, you can use my crypto or my Ether Wallet. Um, I've used that for um, other devices such as the Trezor and the Ledger, but you can use those devices um, also with this because it has the same um, technology inside it. Um, from a price point, uh, point of view, um, this device comes in at $77 um, delivered to the UK, whereas something like the Trezor 
Pfizer comes in at $109 uh, delivered to, to here in the UK. So that's the price um, uh, difference uh, for comparison for you guys. So if you're looking for an alternative to the Trezor, maybe on a slightly cheaper price point, then this is gonna be something that's um, quite good for you. So it's a perfectly uh, capable wallet. And um, you know, it's not bad, the using functions and everything, it all works um, perfectly well. The screen's um, good enough and the, the interface is also uh, perfectly adequate. So it's certainly not a bad little hardware wallet and um, I'll leave it there. So thanks very much for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed watching. If you've got any questions or comments about this device or any other crypto uh, related stuff, um, then please let me know in the comments area and I'll be sure to get back to you guys. So thanks very much for watching and I'll see you on the next video.